Greetings, this is a video looking at surface area of a prism. Now a prism is a polyhedra shape, uh, that means the edges are flat. And one of the features of a prism is that it has the same cross section throughout. A common misconception in maths is that a cylinder is a prism. We use the same formula for a surface area for the volume of a prism, but the f for the volume of a cylinder rather. But um, because the edges are not flat, um, the two cross-sectional edges are flat. But because the other edges are not flat, we don't consider a cylinder a prism. Okay, so now that we defined a prism, I think the best way to uh, describe surface area is the sum of areas of the outside of the shape and the easiest way to work this out is to consider the nets of shapes so if we were to make a square we would need a net will be the top this part we will need a a side a bottom and another side we would also need um, these. So that would wrap round the shape, but we also need two of these. So let's do that then. Okay, so that's the best net I can draw. It's a better example of a net down here. Much neater. Okay, so pause the video and see if you can calculate the surface area of each of these prisms. And I'm going to write the answers underneath and see if you can get the correct answers. The first one is 96, the second one is 256, and the third one is 992 centimeters squared. Pause the video and see if you can get the correct answers. Okay, so hopefully you've done that now. And I'm going to go for the easiest. So the surface area is going to be the area of the top plus the area of the bottom plus the area of the side plus we've got another area of the side as you can see here we've got one two three four five six and the, the top is going to be the same as the bottom uh, we are going to have so this is the top this is the bottom we're going to have one side, two sides, three sides, four sides. Area side plus area of the side. Now I hope you can all recognize that a cube has 
six identical sides. We can count them one, two, three, four, five, six. So we just multiply six by the area of one face, which is four squared. That's six times 16, which is 96. Now here we have different sides. So the surface area of this is going to be two times the area of the front, two times the area of the top, which is going to equal to the bottom, and two times the area of the sides. And hopefully now you're confident at calculating the areas of rectangles. The area of a rectangle is length times breadth. So make sure you can get these. We've got an example of the formula here. Uh, pause the video and it's important that you structure your solution. And it has three parts. Um, the formula, calculation, and the answer. Now I've deliberately missed something out on this solution. This solution is not a full solution. Can you work out what I've missed? Hopefully you can, I've missed the units. Okay, so let's look at some more complicated questions. Okay, so here we have some beautiful triangular prisms. So pause the video and see if you can find the surface areas of each of these prisms. Now, in question B, instead of giving you a length, I've given you n centimeters. And hopefully you're familiar with Pythagoras' theorem to calculate the hypotenuse. So pause the video and have a go at doing these and then we'll do the solutions. Okay, so let's have a look at the solutions. So we've got surface area. We've got two multiplied by the area of the front. These are congruent. We have the area of the bottom and the two multiplied the area of the side. Now this triangle is given a special name. It's called an isosceles triangle. And because it's an isosceles triangle and this length is the same, and this length is the same, the sides are congruent. Okay, so let's fill this in. Now I'm going to use square brackets. I think square brackets make for a neater solution. Uh, but that's a personal choice if you want to use round brackets or parentheses you are very welcome. So let's find the area of the we've got and there's two of them. Remember that the height is the perpendicular height. We've got two times the areas of the of the sides and we've got just the, the bottom there. So let's do the bottom. It is a rectangle. So we've got eight times 10. And then we've got two of the sides, um, which is 10 multiplied by five. Put that in the calculator. We should 
get 204. Okay, so I'm going to double check see if my calculation is correct. So we've got two of these 0.5 times 8 times 3 plus 80. for voila okay so let's look at the second problem I think I'll do the second problem here okay so this is B I'm gonna work out the hypotenuse hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle and it's the longest side. So I'm going to write Pythagoras' theorem from A, B, C. So it doesn't matter which you choose for A and B. So let's do 24 squared plus 10 squared is equal to C squared. And we can work that out on our calculators. 24 squared plus 10 squared gives us 676 so then we need to apply the square root to both sides and we get C is equal to the square root of 676 which gives us 26 centimeters And we can double check 26 times 26 is indeed 676 and we give this because all these are integers we give this triangle in Pythagorean terms a special name it's called a Pythagorean triad okay so let's have a go to B um, you can use the the nets to help you um, I don't have enough space there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna rub these out not to confuse us. Okay, so this is my favourite colour. So we've got surface area. So we have two triangles. Uh, let's call these the area of the sides. These are congruent. We've got the area of the base here. We've got the area of the front. And then we've got the area of the, I'm going to call this the back. So let's do this. Uh, we've got half the base multiplied by the height. We've got the area of the base, which is 10 times 30. We've got the area of the front, which we now know is 26 multiplied by 30. And we've got the area of the back, which is 24 times 30. Put that in our calculators we should get 2040 now i want you to check to see if this solution is correct what's missing so i hope you can recognize that the units are missing and the units are meters squared okay good luck with uh, your calculations of surface area